So my speech today is on Darwin's theory of evolution. And my question for you guys is how many of you have ever heard of evolution? And most people consider it to be a theory relating to how humans evolved from apes. But it's really so much more. It's all about populations in, in general evolving and changing the characteristics over time. And there's many ideas floating around evolution. But there was one guy, Charles Darwin, who was living in England around the 1800s, who really solidified the first ideas of evolution. He published a book called On the Origins of Species, which he came to these ideas because of a study that he conducted in the Galapagos Islands where he studied finch populations and observed all the other animals. And through that, he came to these certain set of beliefs, which he calls evolution. So just a fun fact is that when we're talking about how apes can evolve, or humans evolve from apes, many people actually believe this idea to be true. Um, the blue represents those who believe this idea, and the red represents those who reject it. And the yellow represents those who are not really sure either way. And if you can tell, we're, the United States is at the bottom, and we don't really accept this idea, but we're kind of cut half and half. But if you look at countries like Iceland and Denmark, these ideas are really accepted to be true. So my credibility, why should you believe anything I'm saying? Well, one, I'm a bio major here at Cal Poly. Second, I've taken a lot of classes. I've taken IB bio and honors bio in high school, so I've had three years of bio knowledge. And third, I've conducted a lot of research beforehand so that I can give you guys accurate information. So what is the relevance? Why is anything, why is evolution important to you? Well, Darwin is considered the father of genetics, and his theories are common um, in history. You probably studied it in one way or another because it affected um, the, or just people in general and how they view the world. And con populations are constantly evolving. And you're like, well, I don't think populations are evolving. I can't see things changing in species. But it doesn't have to be a really recognizable trait. It can be something as simple as a farmer sprays his crops with a pesticide so that he kills all the bugs. Well, maybe 95% of those bugs might die. But you have that like 4 or 5% that have these traits that enable them to be immune to the pesticide. So they survive, reproduce, and all of a sudden, the next time the, pest, the farmer sprays that pesticide, there's no um, response. All the bugs can survive because they evolved to have this trait that allows them to survive pesticides. So my thesis I have determined is that Darwin created the theory of evolution, which changed society's perception of heredity and evolution by stating first, his theory of natural selection, second, his theory of common ancestry, and third, the idea that organisms are slowly and gradually changing the population over time. So if you look to the right, I have this book, and it's one of the most famous books of all time. It was by Darwin. It's called On the Origin of Species for short. Um, and it really it combines all of his ideas on evolution. And so the first idea that I want to express to you guys is his theory of natural selection. So basically the theory of natural selection says that certain species or certain individuals within a species are better suited to an environment. And the reason they're better suited is because each individual within a population has slightly different traits that will allow them to better survive or to die out. So when you talk about traits, you talk about certain alleles. And my example for this is the peppered moth. And the photo on the left is the pre-industrial um, revolution. And on the right side is the post-industrial revolution. So if you look on the left, you see a black moth. But really, what you're missing out on is there's actually two moths here. Can anyone find the other moth? Besides the bio major. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's right below, but it's really camouflaged. You can barely see it. Even though I'm looking, it's still really hard for me to see it. And so if you're a predator, are you more likely to try and eat the black moth or the white moth? Black moth. The black moth, because you can see it better. So it makes sense that the black moth populations were really rare during the pre-industrial revolution. There's so much moss on the trees, and it's impossible to see the white moths. But at, during the industrial revolution, all the moss died off the trees. There's so much black soot that it really couldn't survive. And so now the black moths are more camouflaged than the white moths. So now the white moths are going to die out, start to die out. 
and the black moths can live longer, so they pass their traits on to their offspring. So that is how um, populations can evolve. And so in general, with any species you can see, if your traits allow you to live in your environment more successfully, then you're more, um, you have a better chance of passing on your traits. And over time, it might be really slow and gradually, but the, or the species will evolve. And those traits that are not favorable will not be passed down because those individuals won't live long enough to pass them down. And then as below is a quote by Darwin um, that is found in his book on the origin of species. And it said, it is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that is the most adaptable to change. So that really sums up natural selection. And the second idea that I'd like to propose to you is common ancestry. So common ancestry refers to, it's in Darwin's theory of natural, or it kind of relates to Darwin's theory of natural selection. And it says that all um, species that exist today originated from one common ancestor. We all have that one common ancestor when we had the start of life. So if you look down to the left, you'll see um, it says the origin of life. And from there, you had three separate um, categories that existed. So you have the bacteria, the eukarya, and the archaea. And we're the eukarya. We are so that our family is there. And, but we all originated from one common ancestor, according to his theory. And our evidence for that is 